All right, our study today of church history, and here it goes again. Well, we're going to keep going. During our church history today, I apologize, we're having difficulties, is on the church history of pews, what we sit on. This is by Dr. Stiley, William Hayward, that's me. And this study began when our family was in Connecticut. We visited Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and we studied church history. And I found it interesting, the history that's behind the pew. And there is a history behind the pew. Pew is an enclosed seat in a church. Pews were formerly square. In modern churches in America, they were generally long and narrow and saw sometimes called slips. Uh, okay. Churches were not commonly furnished with permanent pews before the Protestant Reformation. The rise of the sermon as a central act of Christian worship, especially in Protestantism, made the pew a standard item of the church furniture. Some church pews were installed at the expense of the con congregation, and they were personal property. There was no general public seating in the church itself. So when somebody comes to the church, that's my seat. That is a historical accurate document that we're going to read right now of church records. Because there was a time in the church that was my that is my seat. It was personal property and there was no public seating. So I can just imagine. You know, bring your friends and bring your family to church, but there's nowhere for them to sit. That is awkward. In these churches, pew deeds, like a deed for a house, recorded the title to the pew and were used to bear them. Pews were originally purchased from the church by the owners of this system. And the purchase price of the pews went to the cost of the building of the church. There you go. You got a, you got a church building project? Charge for the pews. When the pews were privately owned, the owners sometimes enclosed them in lockable, with a lock, pew boxes. And we've seen this in Massachusetts, and it's, it's cute. The church doesn't have a line of pews. They have little boxes. And in those boxes, there was, you know, seating around. Some of them had heaters. Some of them had cribs, mats. They were decorated by the families. And we'll see as we go on. And it's extraordinary to see the designs and what the family and the people did for their seating that they owned in the church. And the church would be in different squares. Cubicles, what we would call it today. And ownership of the pews were sometimes controversial, and there were cases, many cases, in court. Though Paul says, you know, in Corinthians, don't go to court. Thunder. Certain areas of the church were considered to be more desirable than others, as they might offer a better view of the services, or indeed, might make a certain family or person more prominent and visible to their neighbors during the service. Look at our family. Look at us. Look how great we are. We're important. We're rich. I think you call that a click. During the late medie medieval and early modern period, attendance at church was legally enforced. You had to go. So the provision of the church pews offered a public conception of the social hierarchy within the whole parish. Now today we got social media church. You sit home in your house and you watch the church service. At this time, many pews had been handed down through families from one generation to the next. Otherwise, <coughs> wealthier residents often expected more prestigious seating and the reward of influential of material keep the church, you know, I'm more expensive than this church, I got more money in this church, I get the best section. That goes on today. 
such erection of galleries. Dispute over pew ownership was not uncommon. That's my pew. That's my seat. How dare they sit in my seat? Due to importance of European culture and usefulness, the usage of the pew has spread to many courtrooms in Europe and has additionally spread to Jewish synagogues due to the trends of modeling synagogues similar to churches in Western Europe. In most old churches, the family names are carved into the end of the pew to show who sat there, but in some bigger cases, the name of the village was carved into the end, and only one person from every village came to Mass. You know what church Mass is? Every week. So, that's your pew? They carved their names into it. I advise you not to. I don't think your pastor would be too happy. Unless you buy your pews in your church. Until the early mid 20th century, it was common practice in Anglican, Catholic, and Presbyterian churches to rent pews. In churches to families or individuals as the principal means of raising income. So you didn't pass the plate. You sold or rented the seat. This was especially common in the United States, where churches lacked government support through mandatory tithing. This by nature enforced a sort of social status, we got social media, in church seating within clergy. So, there was a time you could walk into church and say, hey, get out of that seat, that's mine. That's my family seat. We own it. We've got the title. We've got the deed to show we own that seat. That's where it came from. Pews became a more common in American churches because they were a source of income. American churches charged for their seats. Now, we've seen them in Massachusetts. Pew rental occurrence as a source of controversy between the 1840s and 1850s, especially in the Church of England. The legal status of pew rent was, in many cases, very questionable. Further intensified a problem with the lack of space in churches that had been noted that had been noted already in the 1810s, especially in London. In the particular, Richard Yates, in his pamphlet *The Church Danger* (1815), with his estimation over 950,000 people who could not worship at a parish church. St. Philip Clodwell, a commissioner's church, was the first London church to break with pew rent. People couldn't go to church because they couldn't pay the pew rent. People couldn't go to church because that's my seat. Many Anglican Catholic parishes were founded at this time as free and open churches. Not charging seat was a Catholic thing. Characterized by their lack of pew rentals, in the mid-century reform, pews were on occasion removed from English churches in order to discourage rental practices. All right, we got a problem with rental churches and, and, the, and the pews? Just take them pews out. <laughs> wow. You walk in the church, well, where do I sit? The Free and Open Church Association was founded in 1866 by Samuel Ralph Townshed Meyer. M-A-Y-E-R. They knew there was a battle for the seat in the church, did you? It turns out that there was no evidence of churches having seating of any kind for at least the first 1,400 years or so in Christianity. So the time of Jesus... 1,400 years later, there was no seating. In other words, Augustine, Jerome, Thomas Aquarius, Martin Luther, John Calvin, all those guys were likely lived their entire lives attending church where there was standing room only. In ancient Rome, we're looking at, for instance, almost never sat in chairs preferring to stand or incline, while modern Japanese are perfectly happy sitting on the floor. 
even well onto their young, elder years. The idea of sitting in a back chair is comfortable is modern, Western notion, and one we're con currently learning as all sorts of health drawbacks. Sitting in the chairs we have today, they're unhealthy. Sitting in your pew at church, even though it's padded, is unhealthy. Sitting at a desk chair, see, is unhealthy. Also keep in mind that ancient and medieval, medieval Christian worship involved the average number much more actively and a lot of kneeling and reciting and climax with the retired congregation cornering for the communion. Seating churches didn't really become a thing until per parishioners got bored enough to wish they were seating down. And that was about the time of the Protestant Reformation. So we talk about the Pro Reformation. One of the things the, Pro the Protestant Reformation brought was sit down. So-called pew, uh, excuse me, so-called box pews. Box seats. You know, when you go to a theater, box seats, which were mainly popular in England and America, for, <coughs> excuse me, were anything but the serious benches we're used to and featured four walls. Now, this is what we've seen in Massachusetts. Often shoulder height or higher. Now, the walls we've seen were about, came to your waist. They weren't that high, if, if I remember. So when you sat down in the box of some of these churches, you couldn't see the, the, the pulpit. You couldn't see the preacher. Your walls were high. Along with doors, and we saw that, windows, curtains, kneelers, tables, and sometimes even fireplace. And we've seen that. Little iron fireplaces and cribs, wallpaper, carpeting, little children's, you know, you know stuff you put under the refrigerator. It was neat. These were also bought and paid for and frequently custom built, as I said, by the congregation's wealthiest family who held actual deeds to them and frequently passed them down to their children as real estate. So when you say, that's my seat, you better believe it was their seat. They held the documentation. In the church rec, and a lot of the church records, when you go look up church history, one of the records you, when you find out names and, and attendance of churches, is this family owned that seat. That family owned that seat. I got quite lucky because my grandma would be, they're sitting in my seat. And we didn't realize, well, again, when we went to Massachusetts, Rhode Island, in Connecticut churches that's my seat is a church historic statement that is true I mean it's not true today I, I don't know if they, I don't know that any churches today sell their seats I know church congregation where they take an offering for seats okay where were we? on a rare occasion the deed or pew would would free up. And they were more often not a public fist fight or what family would get to pew. So whatever reason, here's a pew section. It's up for hire. It's up for rental. This family moved, this family died. We had this pew set. There would be fist fights for that pew section in the church to get that title deed. And you know, today they say, you know, the, the, the carpet color, the wall color. That's, we want that pew section. And we'll duke it out. Churches were getting more and more expensive to build and maintain. Pew sales and rentals were providing a large chunk of the funding. Especially in America where church weren't publicly funded. Now we're... The churches in America did not get any money from the government. Unless you were a congregational church, 
the church in England got paid from the government. That's a whole nother study I'll probably do later. Evidently, though, the more reasonable voices won out and most parishes did away with the box pews, replacing them with free and open wooden benches we know today. So, if this thing didn't stop the free and open pews, you would walk into a church and you may not have a place to sit because somebody owned that spot. So you couldn't put a church on, all are welcome because we ain't got no seating. And what paid for the church and the supplies wasn't passing a plate, was how much the pew section was or the rental. And it was more a sure income that you can record in the books than, all right, passing the plate. Okay, pew rental, we got $1,000. Every month we get $1,000. Uh, tithe and offering the plate, sometimes we get $30, sometimes we get $2,000, sometimes we get 100 For most of church history, worshipers stood. <coughs> they did. There did not. Uh, there did not exist only a few scattered benches for the elderly to sit on. In the general nave of the church, and it was entire void places. So, where there were no seating, there were some places in void places of the church. Or on the outside walls of the church inside the building, there were seats. They were for the elderly, the handicapped, or the disabled. So we see, like in Nehemiah, when they stood up, as Nehemiah was to read from the scripture, or Ezra, I think it said they sat back, back down. Not in the churches up to the Protestant era. They stayed standing. Personally, I don't even like to stand up when my feet hurt. You know, when they say, okay, let's stand for this hymn. I mean, I would be one of the ones that probably get one of the seats because my feet are lame, but how do you feel about standing in church? That's what they used to do. Pews were essentially not existent. Unto the Protestant Reformation. No, Protestant Reformation brought a change and brought a pew and pews to the church. And the pews that came were boxes. And you bought them. And you rented them. And then there became arguments. There became fighting and bruises. And dominance of the richer people over the lower, lower people. And then they... You had the thing free and open. All right, let's tear out the boxes. Let's put the, the, the seating in it. And then I would assume came the collection plate. There was no collection plate. When the pew boxes were there, the, the money came in from the rental. Most Protestant churches... The emphasis during the worship service was not, not the mainly liturgical movement, but the sermon given by the preacher. Oh! You mean there was a time where people were going to church for the message? And not because, oh, my girlfriend goes. Not because, oh, God, look how great. See, God, are you happy today because I'm in church? Oh, if I go to this church because I have a position in this church. I'm a deacon. I'm a Sunday school teacher. There was actually a time they went to church to hear the word. Oh! oh. Sorry. But the sermon gave, the sermon given by the preacher, the interpretation of the Bible by the local pastor was the chief focus of the Protestant worship and led to the long disclosures of the pulpit. Long. There were long services. And you stood during the long services. You 
you know, today it's about an hour. Uh, we had we were in one church, thirty three and a quarter, three quarters of an hour of music and karaoke, and then fifteen minutes if you want to call a message. So usually today is about forty five minutes to an hour. And we sit on pew. We sit in chairs. Later on, when the churches could afford the installation of pews, they still relied on the parishes for additional income to begin to rent the pews. So the pews came in. After the Protestant Reformation, okay, they put the, okay, the pews cost money. You're going to have to rent your seat. That's my seat. I paid for it. Look, look I, got, I got the receipt. I got the title deed. <laughs> so when somebody say, that's my seat, it was true. That's church history. They relied on the parish's additional income and became rent pews. So for some churches, the renting of the pews was additional there was a collection and they charge rent. Some churches, they put the pews as property. And don't forget too, many of these churches, you also pay for a property on the church for the church, I forget, the cemetery at the church, I forget if they call it a graveyard or cemetery. One is where you're buried by the church in the church property. I forgot it was Graveyard Cemetery. I think it's Graveyard. So, in a typical church, you paid for your family square. And you paid for your family plot. And that's how the church got income. That was the church's main income. Where you sat and where you lay. This practice was brought over to the United States from England. Was adopted by the Catholic Church. Pew rentals were very common in Catholic churches and even authorized by the Third Council of Baltimore as a type of fundraiser. <laughs> Leave it to the Catholics. By the way, Baptist churches are now having fundraisers and bazaars and hot dogs and picnics and garbage. Yes, I said garbage. At the same time, pews have not readily adopted by the Byzantine or Orthodox Christians. Now the Byzantine, that's our. That's Antioch. To this day, most English, English, Eastern churches do not have pews. The Orthodox churches. And vigorously defend their choice. So, I assume over in, in Europe, you would go to an Orthodox church, you would walk through the doors, and where do I take a seat? Are you elderly or lame? No, you don't take a seat. <laughs> no. One orthodox publication explains the spiritual reason why they refuse to have pews in their church. Now listen to this. And this is a quote. This is a quote from an orthodox church. Pews teach the lay people to stand, to stay in their place. Which is passively watched what's going on up front where the clergy performed the liturgical on their behalf. Pews preach and teach that religion and spirituality is the job of the priest, to whom we pay a salary to be religious for us. Since it is too much trouble and just too difficult for the rest of us to be spiritual in the real world of modern North America, wow! Boing, that goes a sword into the butt. Pews serve the same purpose as seats in theaters and bleaches in the ballpark. We perch on them. Wow. I haven't heard that from a Baptist pulpit. 
to watch the professionals perform the clergy and the professional trained altar servers while the professional choir sings for our entertainment, end of quote. You remember we read over here the box seat, the box pews, and you can get box seats at the ball game? Congratulations, the world and the church has intermingled by sitting on their behind. We used to stand on the promises. Now we sleep in the pew. Be, I would think it would be quite hard to fall asleep. Standing. You can ask Eutychus. From the 1600s to the 1800s, churchgoers of most denominations were seated in their houses of worship according to social rank. Whether they were assigned or purchased. Oh! All right, we purchased that seat. It's our seat. Sorry. Or the church said, you sit there, you sit there, you sit there. You didn't have a choice. I got freedom. <laughs> the expressive and nearly universal Christian discernment of social rank as part of divinely ordered hierarchy of creation. That's your click. I guarantee the pastor's click friends and family had the greatest seats than you know just those people. The highest ranking pews were closest to the pulpit and lowest further from the pulpit. That's not that everybody doesn't sit up to the pulpit today. They sit from the farther back. Private pews gave a rise to practice of numbering pews for easy record record keeping now churches number the people and not the pews i've been in churches where they count the people but there was a signed number to the pews number four belongs to the smith family number seven belongs to the jones family number eight belongs to the tyler family Some pews were aside, were set aside for general seating for special groups. Details vary according to town, location, date, and circumstances. Alternatives include reserve, reserving seats for adolescents, for the poor, widows, hard of hearing, and black people. So when you go into a church and you got, and I've, I've been in a all the children sit here. That was something that happened in church history. Now I'll tell you personally with my family, I'm a Connecticut, I'm a Connecticut Yankee. And we sit husband, wife, father, mother, and children. Our children, the children of that family, don't go sit with that family. That's a Connecticut thing. I approve of that. There's a lot of Connecticut things that happen in the churches. Now I've been in Florida for over 10 years. And you know what? Some of the Florida church things, wood, hay, or stubble. Yes, I said that. These were called Negro pews. These pews were sometimes numbered and sometimes labeled free or Negro. That's history. In the United States of America, these pews were used by black people, free or enslaved, and Native Americans. So there was a black people section, and there was a Native American section in the church. That's, that's history. Right or wrong, it's history. Often the Negro pews, I can't say those two words again, would be in the upper galleries as far as possible from the pulpit. Well, today, Christian, the Christians today, they sit as far as from the pulpit they can. Things have changed. White people would be appointed to oversee and monitor them. Apparently, slave owners had to purchase pew space for their slaves in their churches 
just as they did for themselves. So there were slave owners. I don't, I'm not for slavery. Slavery. Not only did they bring their slaves to church, but they purchased a seating for their slaves in the church. They hear the sermon by the preacher. From the, night, from the 1840s into the 1930s, churches gradually shifted from private pews to free and open seating, giving a rise to the term free church. Old pew numbers and labels were usually left in place. The Reformation in the mid-16th century stripped churches of all their images. The medieval windows would have been full of stained glass and brightly colored pictures of saints and religious scenes would have been painted on the walls. There might have been a, a rude section across the chalice arch, and above it, <clears throat> excuse me, a rude, a life-size representation of the crucifixion. That stuff is bad. All these images were destroyed at the Reformation as superstitious and idolatrous and they're back today. Called Christianity in America. Because the Protestant reformers believed that people were worshipping the actual images rather than God. Amen! This, proce this process destroy destruction did not stop until the Reformation. <clears throat> During the Civil War, many carvings and superstitious pictures were destroyed. <coughs> Excuse me. And here we are in 2020. Now sat in Baptist Baptist churches. That had a plaque on the wall of the founder of that church. I I I was at a church one time where the stained glass windows of a Baptist church and Jesus and the apostles were all black. I'm not talking about the Catholic Church. I'm talking about Baptist churches. And you know the Baptist churches that have the, their, um, oh, what's it called? Their grove, which is completely abomination. You know, every Baptist church is going to have, to, even their artificial, they got to have those little trees and, and bushes, especially around the pulpit. That's a grove. I said that. Yes, I did. I believe it's wrong. Thank you very much. You can read about church history and read the Bible and find out what's right. After the chaos of the Reformation and the Civil War, religious life calmed down. Most churches received new fittings, such as pulpit and box pews. Old fittings were swept away during the late 19th century restoration. 19th century restorers believed that they were putting the church back to went to what it was before the Middle Ages, but in the process, they often threw away a great deal of history. So the church was clean, and they brought the abominations back in, and I can tell you churches right now, names and I won't, where they brought the, the Baal bush of Jeremiah chapter 10. And yes, I said Baal bush. And there are churches that have Estar egg hunts. Guidebooks often refer to the 19th century restoration as modern. But as we move into the 21st century, they too are become part of history. By the 19th century, the old parish system was on the verge of collapse. Its boundaries have been set up in the 12th century and the landscape of England had changed since then. Growing cities like Birmingham, Liverpool, London, Manchester were particularly bad, badly served, especially around their formerly rural fringes. Even if there were churches nearby, there was no guarantee that you could get a pew to sit on. In most churches, the pews were rented out to individual families. Often the pew belonged to a house, family. This placed a great pressure on space 
as no one else could sit there. Galleries along the sides and back of the nave for precinting were built to try to cope with this problem. But, e but this often was insufficient to meet the expanding population. Today, the church says all are welcome because the members of the congregation that church don't even bother coming anymore. In addition to the Jerusalem temple, Christians at first worship in private homes, the book of Acts. When persecution drove them out of the temple, and homes were the only place they could gather. Such archaeological evidence suggests, here's history, that there were only two items of furniture provided. A chapel chair for the presiding elder, sitting prostrate of authority, like Jesus sat to teach, Matthew chapter 1, and a table for the Lord's Supper. So there was, a ta there was a chair and a table for the Lord's Supper. They usually met in the dining room. The only large room in the house, frequently occupying the entire top floor. This upper room, this upper room was normally furnished with a table and three surrounding pews. But as the Christian public expanded, the worship developed, the assembly rooms became larger. By the third century, they were furnished with a large, with a special table or mensa for the Lord's Supper. The officiating elder sat near the table on the chapel chair or cathedral, which evidently gave its name to the cathedral. There was no other seating. The congregation stood throughout. The house church was superseded by the church house. Uh, don't like that. Since public buildings were not option, they were pulled down in the next persecution. Also, as soon as they went up, Christians with the means to do so built private houses to view and to use for worship. Their plan was basically simple. Sometimes the central open court was the meeting place, sometimes the upper room. When the Emperor Constantine was converted to Christianity, he made it more tolerable for people to accept Christianity without placing it above other religions. It wasn't until Emperor Theodosius, after him who made Christianity official state religion, by decree sometime after the Christians were at, least, at last free to erect permanent buildings. So Rome state religion we're against church and state is what gave the church the ability to build a church building when we used to meet according to the bible in a house church which i am particularly fond of they met house to house and you can go after me all you want just get in line They did so on a plan of most common archaeological design and public buildings of an empire, the Basilica, which was used primarily as a law court. Christian basilicas became structurally no different, but some furnishes changes. The altar was replaced by a large table, placed central in the building after the pattern of a church house, a house church, as the ruins of many basilicas in North Africa show. Congregations grew, the crush barrier around the table became necessary, tending to push it further back toward the apse and from the fence extending outward into the bodily of the building enclosed after it became communion rails. Your church has rails, your Baptist church has rails that comes from the communion rail. In medieval times, the table was more and more seen as the altar, where the sacrifice of the Mass was offered. Mass, Catholic. It ceased to be a table on legs, it became a slab altar again. The Holy Mysteries then enacted the hidden 
from profane eyes of the laity by the erection of more and more elaborate screens. So the altar finally placed near the rear wall. Uh, again, the congregation never had pews or chapel chairs until the Reformation. With the Reformation, radical change affected the church design. The pulpit now became the dominant preacher, usually standing above and behind the communion table, which replaced the altar. The nonconformist meeting house of the table frequently extended well out to the body of the congregation. Where founts were still used, they tended to be near the entrance after the engine. Anglican pattern, but open baptistries tended to dis disappear beneath the floor, covering under the table. Curiously, where they were freestanding, they shifted either to the side of the pulpit or in front of it. The practical requirements, easily accessible, clothes changing facility, tended to overrule theological considerations. Much of the same applied to the origin. It applied to pipes, came to assume the commanding position above and behind the pulpit so that the attendant of choir pews. It became dominant art agricultural uh, focus and scripturally terrible as though we worship the great god Pan. That would be pipe organ. They were designed that local organ and choir behind the congregation, usually gathered gallery level, Zion Baptist Church, Cambridge, Marylebone Presbyterian Church, London. I mean, it's all the junk coming into the church. In the early church, people stood to worship, and we can see this reflected in art from the walls of the catacombs to some specificated rendering. People prayed with their hands lifted up in arms precision. This is the direct carryover from the Jewish worship. Kneelers had gone hand in hand with pews, which were introduced and kneeling was unheard of in Jewish worship, but likewise in church history, early church history. From here, pews seated basically simply involved. After the Carol Carolingian period, a kind of haphazard, even bring your own seating emerged for the laity. A chair here, a bench there, and a mat on the floor. This increased during the 14th and 15th centuries. By the 16th century, pews were common. Development unmentioned above further separated people from the priests and liturgy, dividing the church up and keeping the laity at bay. Laodicea, I mean, uh, Laodicea, Nicolaitan. The Reformation contributed greatly to pew design. The Reformers placed an emphasis on hearing and not seeing. They rejected the lush, visual elements of the worship. You know, all the knick-knack, patty wax and idols and idolatry. They got rid of that junk. They're back in. Everyone stands. For very long services and sermons. A handful of chapel chairs only for those who absolutely need to sit were provided. When, when some American churches were completed in the past, the floor had been laid. Areas of the closed pews were laid out, marked with chalk, and given a number. These areas, much like house lots, were auctioned off to the highest bidders who have been given deeds to, ser to certify their possession. That's my seat. And their construction of pews according to their own desire and taste. So, there you have it. Matthew twelve forty six. While he, he yet talked with the people, behold, his mother and brethren stood without, 
desiring to speak with him. Matthew 13, 1. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside. Matthew 13, 2. Great multitudes gathered together to him so that he, he went to a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Matthew 14, 9. Are we biblical? Are we going to do Bible? He commanded the multitude to sit down on grass and took five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven. Matthew 15, 29. He, the Jesus departed from thence, came nigh into the Sea of Galilee, and went up into the mountain and sat down there. Matthew 15, 35. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. Matthew 23, 2. Saying the scribes and Pharisees that sit in Moses' seat. Where did Moses' seat come from? Matthew 24, 3. He sat upon the Mount of Olives. And the disciples came near unto him privily saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? He knew scripture was coming. Matthew 26, 36. Then cometh Jesus with him into a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here. So sitting. Standing. Mark 6, 39. He commanded them to make all sit down in companies on the green grass. I don't like the color green. Mark 8, 6. He commanded people to sit down on the ground. Luke 4, 16. He commanded. He came to Nazareth. When he had. When he had. When he had brought up, as it comes among us, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for them to read. Matthew 5, uh, Luke 5, 1. And it came to pass as the people pressed upon to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake in Nesodim. Luke 9, 14. For there were about 5,000 men. He sent his disciples, make them sit down. John 4, 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied of his journey, sat thus on the well. John 6, 3. Jesus went up to the mountain and they sat with his disciples. John 6, 10. Jesus said, make the men sit down. There was much grass in the place. John 8, 2. Early in the morning he came unto the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Acts 8.31, he said, How can I except some man guide me? And he desired Philip they would come up and sit with him. Acts 13.14, when they departed from Pergada, they came to Antioch and Pisidah, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Acts 13.16, Paul stood up, beckoning with his hand, and said, Men and brethren, and they gave audience. Acts 16.13, on the Sabbath day, he went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and he sat down and spake unto the women, which we saw in earth. Acts 17, 22, and Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens. Acts 20, verse 9, there sat in a window a certain man named Eutychus, being fallen in a deep sleep. As Paul was long preaching, Man, the modern church would not have liked the Bible times. Well, there's the pew. There is the history of the pew. So the next time you hear someone say, that's my seat, say, yeah, that's church history. 